It's another day at the Gwinnett County Jail. The summer heat takes its toll. A young woman tries to get her way. I don't want to wear these shoes. Come on. A mother and her husband are sentenced to decades. It's hard knowing that my son is going to be raised by his grandparents because I never wanted that for him. A veteran inmate counsels a newbie. Whether you're in jail, prison, wherever, you'd be in prison within yourself on the outside. Release for this inmate brings joy. I'm going to be waving bye to everybody. <laughs> Telling them I will see them on the outside. Oh. Bye, -bye. But shortly after tasting freedom, she finds herself back in jail again. Of course, I felt about an inch high. Deputies bring in Kimberly, a wife and mother. She was arrested for possession of methamphetamines with intent to distribute. Originally arrested one year ago, she bonded out and was just sentenced this morning to return to jail. Her husband is already serving 25 years for drug trafficking. When I was riding in the patrol car, I was looking out the window and I knew it could be the last time I'd see outside for about two years. Go ahead and stand in that yellow square right here. When I came in for intake, I just wanted to not upset the deputies. All right, I'm gonna check your pockets first. You know, they have to be tough, and they all think that we're scum. Since she came directly from court, Kimberly is dressed in her best suit. All right, need you remove your jacket and slip off your shoes. She was sentenced to two years in prison, one year of house arrest, and 12 years of probation. Go ahead and slip your shoes back on. The moment that I was sentenced, I knew that it would be the last time I'd be standing there as a free person. Turn around, open your mouth. I prepared to be in handcuffs. Kimberly was also charged with intent to distribute methamphetamines, which is a felony. Could have been a lot worse. I could have been charged with trafficking methamphetamine because of the amount that I had. But we did, my attorney made a deal with the state, and they dropped it to possession with intent. I could have been serving a mandatory 10 years in prison. It's your hands. Before I was arrested a year ago, I have never been arrested before in my life. I've never been in trouble with the law before. I had a clean record. Well, methamphetamine is a very addictive drug. It's very dangerous. I could say I started using more often, hanging out with certain people. Any kind of heart condition or high blood pressure. And then I met my um, husband, and he was actually the dealer. So. Once we started dating each other, it, um, it got worse. One bad decision, and I'm going to prison. I'm going to prison. You will receive a shower, a uniform, three pair of panties, and three bras. All right, ladies, go to your left, stay on the wall. It made me very angry to lose my husband. He abandoned us because he knew what he was doing when he was selling could land him in prison, and it did. Kimberly's two-year-old son has now lost both of his parents. OK, ladies, what I need you to do is put your hands behind your back, stay to the right-hand side of the wall. I know I'm going to be emotional later, but now it's not the time to do it. I'm just trying to be brave and just trying to get through this first part, which is the worst part. I mean, it's all scary. It's all very scary. Here's your room key. I need you to pick up your bed. <laughs> Go upstairs here. In the corner, I need you to make up your bed until next show. I fear the other women. I fear getting jumped or robbed or beat up. I'm really scared of, of the other females right now. I just got to try and be tough, I guess. It's scary. This is like, this is real. I'll be sleeping here tonight. First time I've like been 
in any kind of private situation where I can just cry and try to like hold it back all day. It's just time. It's not gonna kill me. There's nothing they can do that's gonna kill me. It's just time. I feel like this isn't real. Like I can just leave and I can't. I can't just walk out of here when I want to. When I'm done with this. Now I gotta face it, so. This is reality. This is my reality. I disappointed myself. I disappointed a whole family. In cell block six, deputies work around the clock to maintain control. <laughs> It's 2 a.m., and a woman in the holding area is banging on the glass of her cell and screaming. The rapid response team is called into action. We're going to make a surprise entry. That surprise entry is choreographed for a very good reason. She's going to be totally shocked and surprised when this team takes control of her. The hot shot handheld defense tool filled with compressed air and talcum powder disorients the inmate. It's been really a great tool for us with the women uh, when they become really emotional and, and out of control and we pop this it seems to change their channel very quickly and then they, they get right out of the fight. I want you to watch very carefully the communication between the officers. It's nonverbal. You won't hear them say a thing. Now they're communicating if you see him just subtly look over his shoulder, what he's doing is he's calling up the restraint chair. Okay, so oh. Why do we do that? Because the less we say, the more calming effect it has on the person we're trying to control. So we have to make sure that these people are handled with the minimum amount of force, but as much as it takes to control that. Coming up. I was just like really freezing. A girl makes one too many demands. I'm not really a whiner, but she was just really snappy, just really mean. Why wasn't she asked in a nicer way? Come on. And when inmates least expect it. We look for weapons or drugs. A cell search. We pat the inmates down head to toe. We search every day. And later. I have a visit with my mom today. A relationship between a mother and her daughter. You can't describe the love of a parent to their child. was failing to pay her speeding tickets. Oh, your car is They just took were really rude. Walk through the metal detector. Come back through again. <laughs> I just love you. <laughs> this will be a life altering experience for me. I don't think that I'll look at police officers in the same way. I'll have a lot less respect for them because of the way they treated me. It was just like really freezing and they were not gonna bring me like a blanket or a sweatshirt. And although I'm wearing a dress, they wouldn't let me put on a jumpsuit. After two hours in the holding cell, Kelly is able to air her grievances to Captain Hicks. Have a seat. I'm freezing cold. Is there any way I could have a jumpsuit like the other girls that came in with dresses right. like mine is that were actually not even as short as mine? Did you ask for a jumpsuit? I did. I'll get you a jumpsuit, but we're very busy. If we treat somebody that's like you that's here on a traffic charge just like somebody that's here for murder. The people here were, like, colder to me. They were a lot ruder to me than when I was, like, I don't know, like, a little more... I don't know what you mean by rude and cold. Can you explain that? Just like when I came in, I was really scared. I was crying. She said, drop your Kleenex in the trash can. I mean, she could have just said, you know, could you throw your Kleenex in the trash can while we do these pictures or whatever? Or why was it even an issue that I had tissue in my hand? 
Why wasn't she asked in a nicer way to throw away her tissue? Come on. For me to have a simple question, though, like while she's putting on my wristband, for me to say, how long does it generally take to get it's, bonded out? They can't tell you how fast you're going to get in and get out. They don't know if we've had 15, 20 people brought in or 60 or 70. She could answer that in seconds. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not that big of a deal. I'm not going to whine about it. I'm not really a whiner, but I just thought it was kind of mean. A few minutes later, Hicks responds to Kelly's request. A jumpsuit for this inmate over here. Of course, they're closed because they're too small. Come this way. Okay, you're gonna be taking everything off and put your jumpsuit on. There's underwear, bra, and shower shoes. Okay. Is there any way I can leave my clothes on like they did? Like they left their clothes on and just put a jumpsuit over to keep them warm? Um, no, we're gonna have to take that off and put the jumpsuit on. Just because I don't want to wear these shoes. I, you know, I'm not getting them both Okay, well, you can, you can keep your shoes on. Okay, I was just gonna put this on over it. Okay, yeah. After Kelly was pacified, she spent eight more hours in the holding cell. Her mother reluctantly bailed her out. Put a little drop on top because it doesn't take but a drop when it goes. Makeup is strictly forbidden in cell block six. But Nicole, who has been incarcerated for the past nine months, has found a new use for colored pencils. They work fabulous as far as eyeliner, mascara, maybe depending on what color eyebrows you can do, lip liner. Hold on, yarns, but I'll show you. Prior to her recent incarceration for a robbery charge, Nicole served two and a half years in prison for trafficking methamphetamines. I was addicted to the money I made selling it. I've never really been addicted to it. methamphetamines. I'm addicted to having nice things. Yeah, the general rule is no wearing makeup, but of course we do it anyways. The moment I got arrested is the moment I kicked the habit. That's about the gist of that. <laughs> Nicole is on parole in connection to a previous stay in prison. The state mandates that she remains in jail until her parole board approves an address that is deemed suitable for a convicted felon. Yesterday from dinner, I came in and I cried because I've been here nine months. I've been here two months that I didn't have to be here, but because they have a process that they like to do, it's on their time, not mine. Nicole is still waiting for a friend's address to be approved so she can finally be released. Oh, wow, this sucks. <laughs> the worst part about jail is the waiting. Waiting to see if you're actually going to be indicted or not. That you're waiting for maybe a bond hearing, or you're waiting to see if how much time you're going to get. I'm waiting to see the judge. I'm waiting on trial. I'm waiting to go to court. Waiting to be sentenced. Wait for meals to come. Waiting for hours. Wait for them to unlock the doors. Waiting, waiting, and waiting. <laughs> it's important to have a job especially when you're doing time, because it makes your time go faster. It's not slow dragging, it's actually moving. Oh. It's just something different to do while I'm waiting. I'm trying to be patient, but I can't wait. It's visitation time in cell block six, and Nicole is anxious to get her friend Jackie signed in. Okay, who's coming? Uh, Jacqueline. That's it? That's All it. right, thank you, ma'am. I'll get it done. I am so looking forward to seeing my friend and finding out what parole had to say to her about me getting out, so hopefully I'll be gone soon. I'm looking to go home any day now. I'm just waiting for my address to be approved and I can go. Hey. Hey. All right, so what did the parole say? Um, I talked to her. She said my address got approved. It did? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! So yeah, wait, they they're supposed to be releasing you immediately. <laughs> I've never been here before. Went through this before, so I'm not quite sure what the process is. Okay. They have a hall just on the property room, and you can go upstairs, pack everything. You will be released. Oh my God! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Love you. I've been here almost nine and a half months, and <clears throat> it's uh, awesome to be leaving. It is, it's unreal. 
It's surreal. <laughs> I'm gonna be waving bye to everybody and telling them I will see them on the outside. I'm getting out and I'm going to my friends and I have a job lined up already and then I'm also getting back into college just as soon as I can. Bye, baby. <laughs> I love you. Bye. Woo! <laughs> I didn't expect to be here quite this long, but it is what it is. So how are you feeling right now? Great, awesome, nervous, <laughs> excited, <laughs> all the above. Oh, I don't want to scream, but I'm in the hallway. <laughs> It feels great to have jeans on after nine and a half months. I'm so over this place. I'm mentally and emotionally drained. I'm ready to go. <laughs> What's up? Hey, girl, how you doing? Oh. I did what I did in my life, and I've chosen to do what I've done in my life throughout my life. <laughs> now I'm going to choose the right way. You in the back. Because now I know the consequences of when you don't. <laughs> it feels great. <laughs> mine, what's your I went mine. Bye. Coming up. We'll go and visit my mom and my son and have my dope and my crack pipe on me and everything. How drugs separated this mother from her child. And I tell my mom I wish I could stay, but I couldn't. I had to go get high. And later, Nicole <laughs> promised she would never return to jail. Bye. She failed to keep that promise. So I'm here again. I mean, of course, I felt about an inch high. Part of life in cell block six are the 12 random cell and bin searches that occur every day. Our cell searches are for safety reasons and to make sure that these inmates are following our rules. If you don't have your bin out, your bin needs to be out with the top open so I can be inside the bin. We look for any kind of contraband. That could be weapons or drugs, but it could also be something that is being used for something it's not intended for. When we go into a cell, we pat the inmates down head to toe. We search pockets, undergarments, we search everything. We search their bins, which is basically just a big plastic container, and they keep all their personal belongings in it, clothing items, food items, underneath bunks, underneath mattresses, underneath the sink. That cell from top to bottom is searched for any kind of contraband, and it's addressed, whether it's minor or large. While women inmates are incarcerated for an array of charges, many of them have one thing in common. Do you have any tattoos? Do you have any tattoos? Do you have any tattoos? I have four. I need you to tell me if you're, each of them are located and where they are. Is this your shirt? All right. Say just like that. Say like, just like that one second. From the crease to right side. We take pictures of tattoos, scars, birthmarks, identifiers. If they become fugitives, then we can readily identify them from someone who might have a twin or you have someone who looks like you. The reason I ask what tattoos you have is to make sure that this is the person that I have in my system already. And for future confirmation, if you ever come back in here. Straight ahead. Next photo. I got this tattoo right here because I used to like to look in the mirror when I get high. So every time I look in the mirror, I see my son's name. Tasha, 25, has been in jail nine times in the past five years. It just reminds me about my little boy and what I'm doing in the street, leaving him back at home. She is currently serving time for violating probation on a drug possession charge. I didn't really know I had a problem until I had my son, because I couldn't stop. I tried, you know, I would go and visit my mom and my son and have my dope and my crack pipe on me and everything. And I'd tell my mom I wish I could stay, but I couldn't. I had to go get high. It's just one she of those days. <laughs> Tasha is on a waiting list for a major drug rehabilitation program. She's already waited in jail for four months. Being here 
I don't have to worry about paying bills. I don't have to worry about finding a job. I don't have to worry about, you know, temptation of getting high. I don't have to worry about nothing in here. But to go step outside, I'm actually going to have to face the world, you know, and that's scary. The time sucks, but I need it. If I could get out today, I'd probably mess up because I'm not ready. And I know that. Four months isn't enough time. And that's sad. Tasha is a part of the inmate worker unit. Today, a van will transport her to the local recycling plant, where she will spend the next eight hours sorting trash. We come once, sometimes twice a week. Because we don't ever know exactly which day we're going to work. We pull out all the like clear bottles, anything that says Pete, or what's the number? Two, number, number two. two. We pull all those out and separate them from the other bottles for recycling. Upon her return to the jail, Tasha and the other workers are told to prepare for dinner. After working all day at the recycling plant, Tasha wants a shower, not a meal. I'm mad right now. Cuz, man, we've been working all day, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take a shower. They're making us eat. Why we gotta eat? I asked him, I said, I'm not trying to eat. Can I just take a shower? He said, no, nah, we just eating. I'm in jail, it's all good. Mm -mm, no, I don't want to. Yeah. I can't either. Night trip, all of the whole nine yards. Thank you. I'm good. Finally, after a long day of work, Tasha gets her shower. Right now, I'm in the process of writing the story of my life. Starting from age 16, where I first got into drug addiction, to where I am and why, you know what I'm saying? It's very hard, because each little piece of my life is something I haven't dealt with yet or something that I've forgotten, or, you know, I'm having to go back and remember all these things that I've tried to put off for so long. It's opening wounds, and I'm actually feeling the pain and crying it out instead of getting high and running from it. I want to know what it's like on that side, to actually have a job, have a home that I come home to and not have to worry about getting beat up or the police kicking my door in, you know what I'm saying? It's going to take time, but that's what I want. Anything's possible. Coming up, $368 is all she needs to become a free woman. But no one will come to bond her out. I hate it. I hate when we get closed in. I hate the door when it closes. I hate being in here. three years. I don't want to be here in the next three months. It's time for me to grow up. Janice, 27, has been in and out of jail on multiple misdemeanor charges. The most important thing that I've learned during my time here in jail is how important my daughter really is to me. Home is with my daughter. Wherever she's at, that's home. This last incident, I've learned that I need to stop drinking. Even though I've quit doing drugs, meth, crank, each time I've quit one, I've picked up another. Today, she's on work detail, considered a privilege by many inmates, because for them, it breaks up the monotony of the day. 
The biggest size we have is a 10X. As you can see, I can use it for tits. Ta-da! I requested to be in the workers' unit because I knew that I wouldn't have to be locked down in the room all day. When I have to be locked down in the room all day, that's when I start feeling caged in. I'm doing work, just like I do on the outside. I would work, and I actually enjoy it. Janice has been in and out of jail several times, most recently for a DUI at a detention center in a neighboring county. The women there were a lot rougher than what they are here. Um, they tried to claim me, and I rebelled, of course, and they cut my hair. Um, they told the guard I had lice, so they shaved the back of my head. I had long, blonde, curly hair, and blonde is my natural color. When I got out, they had shaved completely the whole back of my head. I think today I'm going to read it out keeping peace and guiding. Janice claims her troubles began at age 10 when she was molested. I'm not as happy in Dolly as I normally am. At 15, she got pregnant, and ever since, she has raised her daughter alone. Since I've been in jail for the past three and a half weeks, I've written my daughter twice. While Janice is in jail, her daughter is being cared for by relatives. And I haven't received a letter back. It does hurt me, but in the same sense, I have to understand that she's upset with me. She wants me to be there for her. That's all she wants. She's 11 years old, and she's fully developed. And that's one of the things I got to make sure that I'm there for her is that nothing happens to her like they happened to me. To keep her mind off her daughter and her lack of freedom, Janice finds different ways to stay occupied. I worked out because it keeps me fit. It takes away a lot of the stress. And when I can't lay down feeling restless, by the time I get done working out, I want to lay down. <laughs> and it kills the time, too. Because being isolated in here, I hate it. I hate when we get closed in here. I hate the door when it closes. I hate the sound. I hate being in here. I really do. So working out helps me cope with it. It does. Janice has no one to put money in her account for the jail store, where inmates can buy extras like cigarettes. When the girls go out to smoke, they have their shorts before they put them out. I ask them for the cigarette, so I collect them and put them in here, and I break them apart and re-roll them, and I end up with a whole cigarette. Having to smoke the shorts, because I don't get full cigarettes all the time, it turns my fingers yellow. <laughs> so I'm always having to wash my hands, and I have to constantly rub my fingers on the wall to get the yellow stain out. So it doesn't look very feminine. Like many women here, Janice does not have the money to pay her bond. All she needs is $368 to be released. Desperate, she calls her ailing grandfather. I was wondering if you can do me a favor. Do you think you can help me get out? My bond is like 368. I'll pay, oh, like I can pay you as soon as I get out. Huh? I can't do that right now. No? How are you doing anyway? Are you still doing the chemo? Yeah, they still got me on the chemo. All right, Grandpa. Um, I'll have to go, okay? Okay, brother. All right, bye. She then tries a friend she met in Gwinnett a few weeks earlier. Hey, Rebecca, it's Janice. Hey, I called to talk to your mom yesterday. You talked to my mom yesterday? What did she yeah, say? she said your brother was going to get you out. you know which one it is? <laughs> it's probably my little brother that went to Iraq. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You of course I am. <laughs> I know, it's gonna be okay. I'm trying to help you. I know, and you're the first one. Oh my gosh, and to know that my family's trying to help me out at the same time. Oh my gosh, well, God has definitely answered call. my prayers. I did what I said I was gonna do. This is the first time my family has really tried to help me get with anything. I've been struggling so hard on my own, and it's about time I finally found someone that wanted to help me, and it feels great. 
But Janice's hopes were quickly dashed. Her friends and family never came to bail her out. She spent two more months in jail and was released for time served. You have anything on you that'll poke me, stick me, or cut me? Kimberly just began serving a two-year sentence for possession of methamphetamines. After being booked, dressed out, and spending her first nights in jail away from her son, Kimberly volunteered for the workers' unit. So I came over here, I got in the orange, and I went to work about five days later. While Kimberly waits to be transferred to prison, the laundry provides a distraction for her constant thoughts about home. Sometimes I feel like I'm cracking up a little bit. I mean, I cry myself to sleep every night because I miss my son and my family. But there are breaks in the repetition and loneliness. After work, Kimberly has a visitation. I have a visit with my mom today. It's our first visit, and I'm excited. I'm nervous, too. I hope she's not upset, or I don't know how she's going to act. But she seems fine on the phone. My mom is very supportive. You know, I had one year clean on Friday. That was my one year clean. After I got arrested for possession of methamphetamine, I went to a treatment center. Um, my parents were always there. You can't describe the love of a parent to their child. With Kimberly's husband now in prison for methamphetamine trafficking, that love now extends to her son as Kimberly's mother raises her two-year-old child. I was a baby. Oh, the baby's doing. He's okay. Is he calling out for me? He calls out for mama. Mm -hmm. I show him your picture and tell him who you are. What's he saying? Oh, he's his mama. Is that mama? He's his mama. Was he saying his colors? He's saying his colors. Yeah. yeah. All I can do is just stay in contact with my parents and know what he's doing, what he's learning, and when I get out, ease my way back into his life and rebuild our bond. He's a good hand. Yeah, I know. It's hard to be a mama and a grandma at the same time because grandma wants to take over. <laughs> grandma wants to give him treats all the time, but mommy says no. No. Mommy says you have to eat good for I can't really do much from jail because he can't see me. You know, he can't touch me. I feel like his little heart's breaking because I'm not there. And that breaks my heart. Coming up. A veteran inmate. I know that I can be able to help somebody else. Teaches the ropes to a newbie. It's my first time being in trouble like this. Everything inside these walls is unknown to me. I know since I've been here that it could be overwhelming. I just pray that this will be a learning experience. Another inmate is now arriving at the Gwinnett County Jail. Never been to jail. It's my first time being in trouble like this, so I don't know. Everything inside these walls is unknown to me. Sable is a 22-year-old mother. Talk to the wall, please. She was just sent to jail by her probation officer for failing a routine drug test. Do you have anything on you that'll put me, stick me, or cut me? Okay. Right, you just slip off your shoes? Drugs or any of the contraband on me? I didn't have maybe that parental guidance that some children have or what some people may deem as what a person needs. Go ahead and walk through that metal detector. When I first got here, I was emotional because I was brought here without being able to say goodbye to my son. To know that at the end of the day, I'm not there for my son, it makes me feel less of a mother. I'm not the one feeding my son. I'm not the one changing his diapers. I can't hold him. Can you see your right hand? How did you relax your hands for me? Yes, I can sit here and say I'm so accountable, and yeah, I smoke, and I don't think nothing's wrong with it. But at the end of the day, smoking marijuana has taken me from my son. All right, ladies, go around to room CC145. Have a seat in the blue chairs. I don't want to be that typical young mother who is always in and out of jail and still wanting to party, party, be young. I'm young and I had a son, and now it's time for me to own up and be that mature, responsible mother that I'm supposed to be. What I need you to do is walk up these stairs, the first door, make up your bed, you'll be out. I don't know what to expect. I just pray that 
this will be a learning experience. I may meet somebody in there who will be a lifelong friend of mine. There may be a life-changing person or experience. I don't know what's behind those doors. And lucky for Sable, her cellmate is Audrey. Audrey's been here probably for almost about a year. She's one of the ones that stays under the radar. She kind of came in already with the understanding that what she did, she did. And I think she has done her time very well with that. When I got here, I said I knew I had to be here. So I said, I'm not going to wrestle with it. I'm not going to fight with it. Let me sit for a while. After living a life of crime, Audrey has now chosen to help other inmates, to guide them, to mentor them, and to mother them. Lots of girls come here, and I know since I've been here that it could be overwhelming for them. I know that I could be able to help somebody else who might have went down the same path I went. How do you make it the bed now? What goes first? I'm a mother of three, and I have a lot to offer the ladies here. And then the white sheet goes on first. That white sheet goes on first. You got two sheets, and they both the same. What's it like here, Roger? It's wherever you make up. The people that's in here, it's just like the people on the outside. You got the good and the bad. You look at it a time away from whatever you was doing. Mm -hmm. A time here when you could sit and get your mind together. But you got to find it in you to try to hold on. It don't matter what situation you're in, whether you're in jail, prison, wherever. You'd be in prison within yourself on the outside. You just have to learn to adjust to it, knowing that this is not forever. I'm gonna take it day by day, or right now, minute by minute, and just see how it goes. But I can handle it. I can do it. Coming up, after her release... I'm doing everything that society says I'm supposed to do. Nicole is back. I've gotten a job. I've been enrolled in college. Just when I'm getting ahead, I get sent back behind. My name is Sam Hayes, and I work in inmate services here at the Gwinnett County Detention Center. I'm teaching a class in drug, alcohol, relapse prevention. Today, the inmates of cell block six have gathered to support the 11 women who completed the jail's drug rehabilitation class. One of those women is Laura. It's a very intense class and he makes you dig deep into what, what happened as a child. An admitted prostitute and crack addict, Laura considers herself a career criminal. Out of the last 26 years of my life, I've spent the last 23 incarcerated. She is currently serving time for a robbery charge and has been incarcerated for over a year. My head's been so messed up for so long, I don't even know what it's like to be normal. Like when the pencils get really small and people say you can't use them anymore, well, you can always use them again. My drug of choice is crack cocaine, and I relapsed 13 months ago. Once you smoke it, it's like a stronghold. It's a darkness. You can't get away from it. What we've got to do is find some reason for us to, to, to want to care about ourselves. I took Mr. Hayes' drug and alcohol class voluntarily. The difference in all the other times is I didn't want to change. I didn't care. But I care now, and I want to change. And we're never the same person. We are changing and growing all the time. Uh, yes, ma'am. When you're a drug addict, you're used to doing drugs, and you got to learn to live without doing drugs again. It's a whole different style of living. It's a whole different style of living. Can I live? Can I live this way? Laura shares her free time with Sharon. The two have crossed paths in jail and on the streets for over two decades. Where is the one that I like the best? What, what, what are you talking about? The other one. We've known each other for 20 years. It's totally different than any time that we've been together before. I mean, you talk positive things, but we've always fell back into the same old pattern, you know? But this time, I believe in you, and I believe it's going to work. What is this? Thank you for doing the best for us. One of the self-talks you taught us, we wanted dolls to present that to you. We all wrote you something on the back, so if you're looking on the back after you finish. This is great. I am a child of God and a person of word. I appreciate that very much. I'm with you. <laughs> so we 
are going to go on and give out the certificates today. Now, I would now like to recognize the women who have completed their course with a certificate. Duffy. I'm very proud of myself because I've never finished anything I started. I'm not finished this. Her conversation is totally different this time than it's ever been before. She talks about positive things, things that she wants to do when she gets out. This a totally different character altogether. Two months after her release, Nicole is back in jail. So I'm here again. I come back here to the jail, and I see an officer that I was in the dorm with. She said, oh, that didn't take long, and I'm going, yeah. You know, so I mean, of course, I felt about an inch high. After two months of freedom, Nicole violated her parole when police found illegal prescription drugs in her home. When I'd actually turned myself into my parole office, I was crying. They arrested me there. That was my actual realization of not only did I know I have a problem, I was actually ready to work on my problem. I've gotten a job. I've been enrolled in college. I'm doing everything that society says I'm supposed to do. But at the same note, something always happens, it seems like. Mm -hmm. It was just like a no-win situation. I was doing good. I was. Uh, I heard. I heard you had a new car. I did. I got, you a, got a job. Car. I got a job. Yes, and I got enrolled to college for welding. Yeah. Yeah. Just when I'm getting ahead, I get sent back behind. I'm sorry yeah. to see you back. Yeah, it sucks. I don't want to be here. My life has never been planning for me to come in and out of jail, in and out of jail. 